Hi, this is Cam from Sequent, and I will be doing a demo for the Ge Geology Explorer tool of Invisible Geology. The Geology Explorer tool allows you to create simple three-dimensional geological models based on a series of beds, intrusions, and deformation events. And then you can see the chronological relationship between these and how they interact. To get to the Geology Explorer tool, you click on from Visible Geology, you click on the Geology Explorer icon here. And this will open up your model that will be projected onto this cube you can see. You can see there are three layers in here, and these will be the basis of your model. To edit these layers, you click on the layers icon on the top left over here. And from here, you can edit the, the heightness or the thickness of all this whole sequence of individual beds. And you can also down here add additional layers onto this if you want to. Within each individual layer, you can edit the color by clicking on the layer. You get this color wheel up here. You can also manually change the thickness or height and change its name if you want to give each one its own specific name. You can also change the order like so. Let's change all these colors so they're quite obvious. Uh, it's quite so it's good contrast. Click apply and then that will apply the changes you have made. First, I'm just going to create, demonstrate a, sim a simple rule of V's by building a real simple model with, some, with an intrusion and some tilted beds. So to do that, if I want to add any deformation metric intrusions, I'll click on the events tab on the left here, and this will bring up a new event. So in here, there's a series of forms. So these are deformation, events, tilting, folding intrusions, and then there's a fault over here, which is a series of faults that we have created that you can use. So for this one, I'm just going to add an intrusive dike, which will intrude and cut across all of the existing layers. You can see there are some in-scene tools where I can move the dike around and change its thickness. If I click over here, I can change the in-scene tools, and this will enable me to change the strike and dip of this dike. So you can see here, I can change the strike and change the dip. There's also some manual changes over here, so you can edit the strikes if I want this going exactly east west and I want this vertical, I just change it that way. And then when I'm happy with the changes, I can apply to save these. Now we will just add a tilt. Again, you click on the tilt, and then there will be a series of in scene um, handle editing tools and scene you can do. You see, I can move again, move this around. I can change the strike and diff of these, so let's change it. So it's just point right, uh, east west, and it, let's just do a slight dip to the south. So I'm happy with that. I can click apply. So I notice we've just been to model into this cube, which isn't really what real life looks like. So we have, so there is a topography feature. And then here we have created a series of topographies that will cut across the top of the model to see what the geological setting will look like in a semi real world setting. So we've got a series of preset topographies here, such as cliffs, mountains, and for this demonstration, I'll do valley so we can see what the rule of ease is doing in this situation. Click that and I click X out there to remove. And if we look directly down, we can see it is slightly tilting to the south. And if I wanted to demonstrate what different, how steep the tilt is occurring, I can click on the history to show you the events I've created. You can see here, I can, from here, I can edit the tilting, clicking on the edit button. From here, I can just change the dip. So if we want to make that a bit steeper, say 20 degrees, we can then see what happens. It's 30. We can make it even quite steeply dipping at 50 degrees. You can see the kind of all of these is working then. And also, if I want to have this pointing upstream as well, that's what it will look like. 15. Slightly dipping. But let's leave this at a moderate 35 degrees. So, there are a series of other different which we also have. So, for example, we have faulting. So we'll just put a very simple basic fault in here. Again, there will be a plane that you can then edit, fault plane you can edit. Here mm -hmm. I can just change the location of the fault. 
again the stroke and the dip of the fault and you see this handle over here should just make this dip a bit steeper see the handle up here is essentially the slip along the fault so i can pull it down to make this more of a normal fault put it up to make it a reverse fault and if i want to make, give this more of a strike slip sense i can change the rake of the pitch turn this over and then put the stroke down and see here there's more of a strike slip component, component of this fault once i'm happy with that i can hit apply and that will then set that fault into the model the final thing i'll show you is an unconformity so that we can an unconformity will put a series of layers that will be flat and it will cut across wherever cut across the model that you've already created so as you see here we'll just put this there and this will just cut across the top of the model and this will demonstrate essentially an angular unconformity let's just type those up a bit and hit apply so you see here we now have an angular unconformity so if i want to see the relationship between all of these you know, the chronological relationship i can click on the history from here i can click back in time kind of see how this model has changed over time or how the history has changed if for example i want to see what this model will look like with a different relationship for example if the dike had come and intruded after all of the deformation events it can sit there or if it even cuts right through the unconformity so it's the most recent event put it back down um, the other tools that we also have not only do we have these preset topographies we also you can also create your own topography so you click on topography hit new and the first thing you see here is you can edit the dimensions of the topography so this is how big it is you are dealing with something about this big in the onset so we'll make this a bit bigger give it a bit more height and then apply these dimensions and then you'll get next to get a series of tools where you can raise and lower the topography so the raise here is just the area of influence the strength is how intense you'll do it so we can create a series of hills or mountains over here let's have a spur coming out we can make the strength even less so it kind of folds that and then we can add for example a valley in here you can also flatten the top of any bits or smooth out any rough edges if you want you then hit save and return and then that will apply it to the model here we go look at that the other tools that, that we have here is the cross section tool so the cross section tool will project a vertical section above the model from where you place it so you click on cross sections on the right here you click new and then you will see here that there is a projection of a cross section above you can change the location of this you can hit it within the model to the extents but we'll just do it now and this was a good tool for seeing what's happening under the model within the middle because you can only see on the edges so let's just give this a name north east south west you can add as many of these as you like so we can add a second one let's call this north west south east and you see that these are sitting in here like so you can hide individual ones or hide both the other tool that we have another tool we have is the core or the core sample tool and what this will do is if you add this this will add a if you were to drill a drill hole for it what the drill core would intercept based off this model so you can put it anywhere in the model change its strike and its dip and it will project through again you can add multiples of these all throughout your model and you can hide it again hide individual or hide both the final tool we have is the decals tool so the decals will is placing an object on the surface of the model and it will give you a strike and dip reading of wherever you place it so you see here it's picking up this 35 degree tilt that's occurring on these beds this will pick up the 
straight dip of the dike, which is obviously folded back the other, bending, um, tilting back the other way. And if you place these on the angular conformity, you'll see that there is no strike dip on, on these flat beds, so it'll come back with a zero. <clears throat> the cool thing about these tools here, so if I turn them all back on, is that if I edit my model at all, these will dynamically update with my editing. So let's add a fold event in here. Put it this way, and you can see here that the cross section and the decals and the drill core are all changing as I am editing this fold feature. And there we go. Those are some of the basic tools that you can use to start making some real simple models or complex ones if you want to get into it. But let your creativity one